Hey folks, this is Jeff. I'm going to be working on my battery cables. This is the end that goes to the um, to the battery bank from inverter three. And I've got to crimp these lugs on and then uh, then I'll be able to put it onto my uh, bus bar in my battery rack. But it's really helpful if you happen to have a hydraulic crimper. And I do. In fact, I happen to have a battery powered hydraulic crimper. So let's just see what we can get out of this thing. Well, that's two pretty good crimps. I probably could have done a little better. We're all, we're all the way up uh, up on the barrel there with two crimps. With a 10, uh, I think there's a 10 ton press. It may be a 12 ton. I'd have to look it up. But it's pretty good, pretty good uh, press. So that's for number three. Let's, uh, let's get back for number two. For the next one, I don't know which one. We'll just grab a number. We'll just grab a cable. Which one is this? Number five. Let's get back to about right there. Okay, let's try it again. Well, I see a problem here. I let my die slide out a little bit. Let's do it again. Two very nice crimps. Now, I'm not going to film crimping all of these. Uh, all of them will crimp the same way. Now, when I get it through before I hook it up to the bus bars, uh, I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink over this to give it less exposure inside my battery rack. And then I'll tag it. Uh, I'll use red heat shrink on the negative i mean on the positive and black on the negative but that's how you make a good crimp right there all right okay now that i've got all the lugs crimped it on crimped on uh five for the positive and five for the negative I'm gonna have to I'm not gonna hook these up until I get my battery rack a little closer in place. It's gonna be moving over this way about two foot. Uh, and then I'll bring 
these wires into this rack. I've got stuff stored on top of here. I made a dry run with some cables that I had used for another project to make sure how it was gonna bolt on here. So I think it's gonna work out good. I'll have two stacked, two stacked and a single. And I think that's gonna work out pretty good. I'll feed the cables in from the back of the unit. up to the front but before i do that i've got this grounding to do to the crane wire and i'm going to attach it I'm not sure if i get that done this season or not i'm going to attach this wire here to this metal frame and then it's going to jump over and attach to the same spot in the other battery rack right over there. But in order to do that, I'm gonna also have to drill another hole in here to get this cable through. I'm also gonna have to put a couple more holes in this trough to um, ground the trough. Your grounding conductor your equipment ground is perhaps one of the most important wires you'll ever install on a system because it's designed to protect you from electrical shock. And it does that by various means, which we can talk about in another video. But it's a very important conductor. So I'm gonna be grounding uh, this wire way with a grounding lug over there i'm gonna grind it over here i'm gonna pop back out follow this conduit and then ground these two battery banks the racks and the batteries are grounded to the rack through the mounting screws and once i get the grounding done i'll slide it over in place feed the cables in bolt it positive here and the negative here and then I'll have to jumper between this bank and that bank from those bus bars and then I'll have the communication cables and I'll start with this battery and jump down and jump down and jump over and follow all the way up and then follow back around pop through and come to the inverters Each inverter has a battery BMS port right back here. And it's going to control the charging of the batteries. So I'm getting closer. But that's probably where I'm going to end up today. It's already 6.30. And I've got a few more things to do with the animals. So... Y'all have a good night.